Strategy to solve double linear inequality. At times, double linear inequalities can be very complicated. In this particular video, I have taken up three cases and these three cases should cover for most of the double linear inequalities which you're going to come across, right? And then in this playlist, we'll have a few examples to elaborate upon each method, okay? Now, the very first one is minus 11 less than 2x plus 3 less than 23. Now, in this particular case, you can take away 3 from both the sides, rather all the three places, and then get rid of 3 from the center. So, what we get here is minus 11 minus 3 is less than 2x plus 3 minus 3, which is less than 23 minus 3, right? So, after that, when you solve, minus 11 minus 3 is minus 14, which is less than 2x, which is less than 20, right? So, that is 23 minus 3. Now, to find x, what you need to do is divide all of them by 2. So, if you divide them all by 2, what do you get? You get minus 7 is less than x is less than 20 divided by 2, which is 10, right? So, you get your answer, and your solution is that x is greater than minus 7 and less than 10, right? So, that is how you can solve a double linear inequality in which x is right in the center, and it's only at one place. Now, let's solve the second kind of inequality, right? So, this is, this is the first kind we solved. Now, let's do the second kind. Now, here you'll observe that x is there in all the three places. So, we should get rid of that x, right? So, I've kind of modified the first question just to give you an idea how things could be differently written and then we'll discuss the solution. So, now, as you've seen in the earlier case, it was easier to keep x in the center. So, that is the strategy. You have to keep x in the center. So, x is at three places. Let's get rid of those x x's. So, these are plus x plus x. So, what we will do is that we will take away x from both the sides. Rather, all the three sides, right? So, we'll take away, we'll do minus x, minus x, and minus x. Once we do that, what do we get? We get minus 11 is less than x. 2x minus x is x, and is less than 23. And straight, we get our solution, which is x is greater than minus 11, but less than 23, right? So, that is how we can get our solution. That's so simple. Well, let me add here, that at times we may have to show the inequality on a number line. In that case, this solution can be represented as two holes, one at minus 11, the other one at 23, right? And x is in between the two, right? Therefore, we will say, well, x is in between the two. So, everything in between. So, x belongs to a set of real numbers, which is between minus 11 and 23. So, that is one way of representing this particular solution. And these holes should not be filled in since the sign is greater than, right, or less than, correct? It's not equal to, it's missing there. Another way of writing the solution could be in bracket form, say, minus 11 to 23, right? This is another way of writing the same solution, right? Now, let's discuss the third case, which is kind of typical. Now, here what we have is minus 11 minus x is less than 2x plus 1, which is less than 23 plus x. Now, if I want to get rid of this x, I have to add x at all the places. But if I add x, I have minus 11 here, but then I'll have x in two places. So, there is no way that I could eliminate x from the sides as I was able to do for the second example. Do you see that? This is not possible here. So, what to do in such cases? Now, in such cases, we are left with no option than to solve this as two different inequalities. Are you getting my point? So, in such cases, if you are not able to really get rid of x from the sides, then this double inequality will be solved in two parts, right? And the solution, which is common to both, will be our final solution. So, we will rewrite this as minus 11 minus x is less than 2x plus 1 as part 1 and the other part will be 2x plus 1 is less than 23 plus x. So, that is how it becomes. So, we are just splitting this, decomposing our function as two different functions and then 
a common solution or the intersection of the solution will be the final solution right now we can solve this as a single or just a linear inequality so first step will be we'll, we can add x both sides so we get minus 11 minus x plus x is less than 2x plus 1 plus x right so we get minus 11 is less than 2x plus s is 3x plus 1 now we can take away 1 right so we get minus 11 minus 1 is less than 3x plus 1 minus 1 or minus 12 is less than 3x or we say x is greater than minus 12 by 3 right so we get one of our solution which is x is greater than minus 4 right so on a number line how will you draw this solution let me show you that part so what we are trying to say here is the solution of this part let's say the part a is that x is greater than minus 4 let us say this is minus 4 right in that case the solution is this now let us solve part b right now the part b for us is 2x plus 1 less than 23 plus 3 which is uh, okay 23 plus x yeah 23 plus x now so what we can do here is we can get rid of x first which so we have 2x plus 1 minus x is less than 23 plus x minus x so we get 2x minus x is x x plus 1 is less than uh, 20 So we, we did minus x, sorry. So it's minus x. So we get 23 here, right? x minus x is 0, right? So we took away x from both the sides in the first step. So we got rid of x from the right side in this case. And the left side, we got 2x minus x as x. Now we can subtract 1 from both sides. We get x plus 1 minus 1 less than 23 minus 1. Or x is less than 22. So that is the solution which we get from the right side. Do you see that? So let's say this is my right side and the solution here is that x is less than 22. So let's say that is 22 for us, right? And the solution is, so we are moving from here to this side, correct? Okay? Now what is overlapping? What is overlapping between the two? So it's because this could go beyond this, right? So this is all the solution which is kind of going like this. Do you understand? And the first one is kind of like this. Do you see that part? So what is overlapping? Overlapping is everything in between these two. Do you see that? That is the solution, right? So everything in between, I should say, like this. So so now our solution is, for both the cases, that x is greater than minus 4, but less than 22, right? 22. So that is our solution, which we can write also as between minus 4 and 22, right? As an interval. So we can write this as our solution. So the important part which I want to share with you here is that in such double inequalities where it is not possible to eliminate x from two sides in that case, it is important for us to decompose the lin double linear inequality as two and then solve for it and take a solution which is common to both. In case you get solutions like facing the other way, then you may land into a situation where there is no solution. Fortunately for us, we had a good solution here, and that is how it is. I hope the point is well taken. And you can go through some more examples to do practice. And I'll suggest when you read the question now onwards, first try to, you know, pause the videos, try to solve it yourself, and then look into my suggestion. That way it's going to help you a lot. Thank you, and all the best.